And there you are. Oh, hey guys. Hello. Sorry, I mean, I'm, I'm working. <laughs> and working and working, I don't know. What's up, everybody? How's everybody's lovely 2023 going? Hopefully everything's going spectacular, right? I haven't had a catastrophe yet. No catastrophes? Not, yet. Not like San Diego? Did well, everybody that, see no, San Diego? I didn't. Well, okay, I so they had a fireworks show planned for, you know, New Year's Eve. Uh -huh. um, and they had a computer glitch. And all the firework, fireworks went off at once. So they had a fire show um, <laughs> for about 18 seconds. Wow. Instead of a... Or maybe it was like two and a half minutes or something. It was supposed to be like an 18-minute program. I don't know. I'm getting my numbers confused in my head. But all the fireworks went off. And, and it happened all across the city. So you had like three set up. And you had one really, really big one. And then you had like two smaller ones. And there was like somebody that was kind of far away with like a drone. Or I don't know. Maybe just standing on their balcony that videoed it. And you just had like a fireball in the sky That's for a while. Cool. And then two smaller fireballs for, cool. for like a minute. So, I like it. hey, I have just Facebook now. Just FYI. Cool. Yeah. All righty, folks. Um, so we are back with part two. We are back. And of I our novice. I didn't realize we were doing part two until this morning. Well, yeah, that's cool. But, but you're already ready. Yeah. You're just always ready for this. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. How many parts are we doing to this? Well, we might do four. Cause we might do four. Yeah, unless you have a different plan for next week. I don't. Because I'm going to, to Dallas next week, and I may or may not be here on Wednesday. We're going to leave on Wednesday, but I'm going to see if I can convince Rusty to leave after the video. And if I accomplish that, then we'll at least be able to do a video together. But then I won't be here Friday. Okay. And I just thought, you know, you can just tool all four. Because everybody loves watching you tool. Okay, good idea. Right? I've, I've skipped all right already. Oh, you have? So, yeah. So... We've, we've done number one, which is this little rare beauty right here. A little rare beauty. Okay. <laughs> and now we're going to do number four, which is this rare beauty. I love that one. I saw that this morning. I was like, that is beautiful. Tony, you want to go to the overhead real fast? I know that you're doing many things. We'll do it this way so you guys can see that this is number four. Look at those cute little flowers. Yeah, they're cute. I love it. Is anybody opposed to doing four days of, of novice tooling? I don't think anybody's going to be opposed to four days of novice tooling. Yeah. I think everybody's going to love it. So, and then we don't have to come up with a plan. All right. Which I like. Which you like <laughs> tremendously. Yeah. Oh, but then on Friday, we're going to do zippers. Guess what, Dean? Friday is going to be zippers, so we'll take a bit of a hiatus this Friday. And um, Anderson from R&D is going to show us how to install zippers using a sewing machine. And I think we're going to have all three sewing machines. We're going to have a class 20 flatbed. We're going to have a 26 cylinder arm. And then we're going to have a class 3 which you can also relate to your class four because they're the same machine. We just don't have any class fours that we use in the shop because we don't use a lot of heavy stitching. We just sew conceal and carry belts. So we don't need that length. Uh, but all of it is interchangeable with the four. So that's what we're going to do on Friday. Cool. So look, William's even excited about zippers. Look at that. How about Dean? Yeah, Dean. What do you think, Dean? It's zippers. We're waiting. It's a whole segment on zippers. <laughs> Even Sean was like, Dean's favorite. <laughs> Everybody's like, we got it. The Wood Morning Warrior says, I know this is leather stuff, but I'm into quilting and I want to expand my horizons into leatherworking. That's kind of uh, cool. Awesome. Right. Awesome. All righty. Well, you want to get right. a cracking on coaster numero, no, dos tres, cuatro? Yeah, cuatro. This I can cuatro. only start counting at one, but yeah, and then I have to. Because when you go in the middle, you don't know where <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, last week when we did this, since since this was the novice class, I started from the, the kind of the rude beginnings. But I already have the back of this pattern taped. That's right. With, with packing tape. Doing this on paper, you could use a piece of tracing film and trace this pattern off on it and use the tracing film on here. But we aren't going to do that. So I taped the back of this paper and we're going to just trace directly off of this. The first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, Spritz this pattern, or this piece of leather, and I'm going to get it fairly wet here to begin with. And then my first action that I'm going to take here is I'm going to use my wing dividers and set it for the width of this border. And I'm going to mark the border all the way around. And this is something you don't have to do it deep, but you need to do it deep enough that you can see it. Because you are going to cut this with a swivel knife, which I'm going to do right now. 
I'll mark the border and cut the border before I do anything else. Mark and cut. And I forgot my strop, but I think we'll be all right. Oh, we have one. Oh, all right. Just in case. Just in case you feel like you're not slick enough. I do need to strop. Okay. Remember, always strop every time you start. And it looked like I was just dropping one side. That's what someone told me the other day. Kevin, I think. But I actually turned the blade every time, so I just dropped both sides. There you go. You know what, Dean? You are unpleasable. What, Dean's wanting snaps now? No, he just doesn't care about zippers and sewing machines. He wants us to hand sew everything in. I don't know. I give up, Dean. <laughs> I give up. You don't enjoy giveaways, even though we had something specific for you. You left. Something special just for him. And he's like, all right, see you guys later. I'm gone. <laughs> well, you know what? It wasn't just for him. So we had a customer call in and they were asking about it. And I said, we can do that. And then I was like, Dean will be really excited. We're using zippers. But you know what? Apparently, I just don't know you, Dean. I just can't figure it out. <laughs> just can't figure it out. All right. I've got the, the border cut, drawn and cut. Now I've set the pattern on here, and I'm going to start with my flowers and trace this pattern. I always start with my flowers first, and then I do my leaves. Basically all my large features. I don't mean to sound repetitive, but I keep telling people that. Cause, well, that's the way... Yeah, they'll start out in the middle of nowhere a lot of times. I guess that's okay. But if you, if you get a routine going, or you do the same thing every time, you can keep track of where you are a lot easier. You also want to remember the flow of your pattern, which your flowers, everything flows towards the center of that flower. Your vine, everything flows away down, down the center of that vine. That's also something I repeat a lot because I think it's fairly important. Follow the flow. All right, now I'm going to draw in this flower stem. Trace it in, I mean. Then I'm going to go to my leaves. First thing I'm going to do is trace this leaf stem. There's a lot of different kinds of leaves, and this is just one of them that I'm doing. There's two leaves here, but they're both the same kind of leaf. I feel like I need to be specific. I, th I think being specific is, is the best policy. When you're vague, people get confused. <laughs> hey, Liz, what's going on in Dallas? Oh, well, so Dallas is the WISA show, um, the Western Sales, Western and English Sales Association. Um, it's the show that we go to every year to meet with our vendors, and it's where we get to see new stuff. Sometimes we buy a significant amount of odd lots that people might have sitting around that they'll bring us swatch rings of, um, but that's, we go, we meet a couple of our customers there. Every once in a while, there'll be a customer or two that's there, but it's basically just a big, um... It's at the, so now we go get to go south in January, which is really nice, instead of going to, to Dallas, or like to Denver. And also, they could have picked a different city with a different name, because Denver and, like, they're too similar, and I constantly get confused about whether I'm going to Denver or Dallas, or like, I mean, not confused in my head, but just like, the words don't come out correctly, because they're too similar. But whatever, that's a side note. <laughs> that's a sidebar over here. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to go. We'll see what the new offerings are for the year from our different vendors. Um, it's a lot of fun. So it'll be myself, uh, Kendall, our purchaser. Um, my husband, Chris, is going to go, even though he really doesn't have anything to do with leather. And some he, he's just like, it's nice to meet these people, but I deal. My, my job is people. He just deals with people here. So <laughs> the leather side is kind of just nil to him. Um, anyways. It's going to be a good time. It'll be Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of next week. We'll be out there shopping and looking and talking and going. So 
Um, let's see here. Wayne had a question, Denny. Can you explain how you start a floral pattern? To draw one? Mm -hmm. Okay, in a nutshell, almost all of your Sheridan style patterns, is, which is basically what I deal with, but almost all of them go in a circular pattern around a flower. In this case, I've got two flowers, but they're both together, so everything's going around this pair of flowers. If you will notice, it's it's a circular pattern that just goes around and around. Sure is. Uh, and if you've got a series of flowers, a, a bigger area that you're covering with a series of flowers, you might have five flowers, but you will have five circles. Okay. Or five sets of flowers, you know, and you will have a circle around each set of flowers. And it goes from, uh, it's serpentines or figure eights from one to another. You just have to figure out the flow, how you're going to get from one flower to the next. Okay. You know, but that in itself is, is a whole other ball game. Drawing a pattern and, and tracing a pattern are two different things. I feel like you have kind of talked, we've done a couple of videos about we've done it. designing, I, but we could do it again. We ought to do another one with okay. a little bigger, I mean, because I think before I just did a small pattern, a single flower pattern, or a single circle. We'll do a, a larger pattern maybe. There's supposed to link to the Sheridan Flow okay. video that we did. Ooh, yeah. Sheridan Flow. Okay. Now, I forgot one line here. But I'll just cut it when I cut it in. Uh, next step will be I'm going to take my flower center and set it lightly because I'm going to reset it later on. That's right. But I'm just giving myself a, a place. Ooh, and you kind of tilted that one because the leaf is coming into it. I did. It. I did. There's, there's a flower petal that I would have impeded upon. <laughs> Which I have one of And that's on out. top because yes. that flower is on top. So you want to make sure that you're not pushing any of that below your other flower because you right. don't want that. Right. Because okay. three dimensions. Now then, I'm going to start to cut and then I'm going to cut the same way that I drew. I'll start with the flower and then do the flower stem and then the leaf stems and the leaves. And then I'll finish up with all those little chicken necks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Uh, somebody asked a minute ago if it was metal or plastic zippers. We'll probably do both. We will probably, when you're working with the 20, I, I imagine we'll probably do our our narrow or regular zipper. Do those, do those have metal teeth or do those have plastic teeth? On they our have plastic. Nylon teeth? Yes, nylon. Okay. Yes. Um, and then I'll just make sure that Andy uses like the number 5 or the number 10, probably on the, the class 3. All right, flower number one. I just cut that line in that I forgot to draw in. <laughs> Denny knows these patterns by heart. <laughs> well, I've done them. <laughs> but I also drew the pattern, so. That helps. I, I have some idea of what I've done. Sometimes. <laughs> Not always. All right, flowers are cut. Okay. Now I'm going to cut this flower stem in. Flower stem is cut. Now I'm going to my leaves. Cutting the stem first. Because the leaf, everything goes around that stem. Ooh, Bourbon Leatherworks is tooling his first cowboy hat band while he's watching today. All right, that's from, fun. Yeah, and then there was another bush bushcraft leather, mm -hmm. leather from England. Yeah, from Snoodland. Snoodland. I I I mean I don't know if I'm pronunciating that correctly, but that's what it looks like. How about pronouncing it? No, because then that would be correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Tangled Up gave Luna a treat. I, put, I took my treats back to my desk, guys. Yeah. I got Luna a new 
bed, everybody. And she's all curled up underneath it. She is it. all curled up in it. She likes it, huh? At first, I didn't think that she was going to like it, because the whole first day that it was here, she just laid next to it and uh, refused to lay on it. Um, but she she got the hang of it yesterday. I got in and... I actually have a pretty funny Luna story, if anybody is interested. I want to hear it. Okay, so this morning, so we have five dogs. I don't know if I've said that like a million times yet. We have five dogs. One of our dogs, um... How many dogs do you have? Five. Oh. Thanks. Yeah, we have five. So, but we have... One of the dogs does not get along with my male dog that I had. We had a friend pass away last year. We inherited his big male dog. And um, our two big male dogs are not friends. And it's it's been a year now, and it's not getting better. It's not terrible. But anyway, so we have a routine. This is a good girl. So Chris goes out in the morning to do his cardio. Miko goes out real fast, goes to the bathroom. And then um, Chris, then the, Miko comes back into the bedroom. We shut the door. And then Chris hangs out, out in the living room with Wally, which is the dog that we inherited uh, for the, the time that he, you know, like makes breakfast, does his stuff. Anyways, so we have this little Chewini who is always like 10 minutes late for everything. Like, we sit down to watch TV, he has to go outside. Chris wants to take a nap, he wants to eat, and he has to nap with Chris. Like, that's a thing. Like, they are two peas in a pod, those two people. In any case, so he's just always just inconveniently timed for any activity. And so in the morning, he wants to get up after Chris has already gone out and like right when I get in the shower. Is he's like, oh, I have to pee right now. <laughs> right. Now. Yeah, every time. And so I had just gotten in the shower this morning and he gets up out of bed and I was like, no, no. So anyway, so I'm trying to like distract him, right? And I'm like, blue, blue, blue. Well, Luna gets all nervous when I'm yelling at any dog. And so she starts like, tootling around the room, being all paranoid and nervous about things. And I'm, like, trying to keep Blue distracted so he doesn't, like, pee on my stuff because he's a little turd and that's what he does. <laughs> Anyways, and so Luna gets so nervous that I'm yelling at Blue that she jumps in the shower with me. Oh, boy. Like, she just, she gets up on the edge of the tub and then I'm like, Blue, Blue, and she just, like, slowly crawls into the shower like she's in trouble. And then she just sits next to my feet and she's like, I'm here, what do I, what happens now? <laughs> So anyway, so she got a bath this morning. <laughs> this thing right here. Now she's trying to help herself to her treat. She is. Anyway, so that was my morning. I also gave a dog a bath this morning. So that's what happened. Anyways, continue, Denny. Okay. We're, <laughs> everything's cut here. Okay. So now I'm going to start beveling. But the first thing I'm going to bevel will be the border. Because this whole pattern is supposed to be framed inside of this border. Hey, Oops, Denny. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that as media. <laughs> You're getting the hang of it. Martin. Uh, yeah. Kevin. Cheers. Um, so Martin on Facebook asked, does Kevin only use one swivel knife to carve everything? Kevin doesn't care what he uses, frankly, as long as it's strapped. He has zero preference. He really does not do a lot of tooling anymore. The only tooling that he does is when he comes in this room and I make him. I beg to differ. Okay. Kevin oh. wants to use anything that I don't bring in here. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's what Kevin likes. Uh, Are you listening, Kevin? <laughs> Denny can never bring the right set of tools. Um, but yeah, he really, he's not picky. He'll make, well, I mean, he's picky in his own way, but he, he's not at the same time. Like he usually just grabs a swivel knife off his desk. He's got a couple laying there. Um, they're nothing fancy. They're like a $15 swivel knife usually. So. And that's what we, we expounded on that to. Um, Last Friday when mm -hmm. we were doing trading cards, it doesn't matter what knife you're using as long as it's sharp and you know how to use it. The only way to know how to use one is to use one. Oh, so Beaver Bushcraft um, 
ask about those times where sometimes people will take an element outside of the border on purpose. Mm -hmm. So what typically when you do that, is it is it one of your main prominent things that you're pulling outside no, or does no. it, is there any rules that you no. like to go by or just and, whatever feels good? Well, when you do that, you don't want to just do it in one place on a pattern. Okay. You want it to be like basically all your borders every once in a while something kind of comes goes out goes out over the top of yeah it. and that's just a matter of style and and uh, but i think when you do that you all, you need to take into account uh stitch lines that you have anything so if you if your plan is to do some of those because i like that i like when it has like a little bit of an element that breaks mm -hmm. the border i think that that's kind of fun um but you you need to make sure that your border is inset just enough so that when that element goes outside it's not getting in the way of your construction right. Right, and and you don't want to do something that goes an inch and a half outside your border. Yeah. You just want something just a little bit over the edge, you yeah. know. Because basically what you're doing here, this border is a frame, and everything is supposed to be under that frame. The frame is on the outside of this, okay. right? And, and your picture, which is basically what we have here, yeah. picture is underneath that frame. So if you have some... You want the whole pattern to be about the size of that frame. You don't want it to be oversized on one side or the other. You know, you don't want it to just go on forever and have people try and guess what happened to the pattern later. <laughs> you know? For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you do something outside of the border, you have to kind of plan that. And you have to, of course, cut that before you cut your border. That's right. Because the border will be what's left in that respect. But, this is this is a basic pattern that we're doing here, so I didn't do anything like that. Yeah, Beaver, I, I think that that is like just subtlety. So choose maybe even after you've drawn your pattern, maybe that's when you go back through and you say, okay, this element I think could be cool. It'll just tuck outside the border, and then you go th around and you find a few that maybe you finished drawing. You could you could do that a little bit, especially as you're getting the hang of it. Mm -hmm. And then as you feel more comfortable doing it, you could do it while you draw the pattern. I think subtlety would be the key, but also you have to make it look like it was on purpose. If you're too subtle, then it's like, oh, there's a mistake. Oh, there's a mistake. Yeah. The old question, Denny. What's your feelings on a push bevel or why no push bevel? I don't have very good luck with them. Maybe I don't know how to use them. If someone knows how to use them, I would love for them to come and show me. 1463 South Flintstone. We're live every Wednesday and Friday at 11 a.m. Central. You can come show the world your push beveler skills. Yes. their own you know denny just doesn't prefer it yeah he's I, he's never found like the that that's a necessity for i think i just get are you saying i can be more i can be more three-dimensional mm. with with a, a beveler like i'm using now than i can are they talking about that little plastic thingy that you put in your swivel knife well yeah that's a type of push beveler push beveler but they also have one that, that has a handle on it that you can just push, but uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. I've just never cared for it. I have used it several times. And people's, you aren't the only one that's ever asked me that question either. And people say, well, I've got one. I just hate beveling the border, especially like on a belt or something. Mm -hmm. when We're over got, here now, so you need to move that to the other side. Thanks. <laughs> when you when you've got six feet of border to bevel, you know a lot of people start hunting for the easy way out, and a push beveler might be. But a push beveler is also fairly hard to control, so you got to be careful in that respect. But but I don't get the depth out of it that I that I am looking for most of the time. Um, Ashton, this is, uh, like, probably 8 to 10 ounce Herman Oak is what we've got here. Yeah. They're coasters, so you want them to be pretty heavyweight so that they keep their sturdiness. Yeah. You can use, 
you can tool basically any weight of leather down to about three ounce. Four to five ounces is, is as light as I like to tool because I can get the depth, depth that I like out of it. And yeah, once you start going lower than that, it's really hard. You don't have depth. Yeah. You can, well, you get in trouble pretty easy on mm -hmm. anything less than that because it's so easy to cut, cut or to stamp all the way through that, that yeah. lightweight leather. It's a, a lighter weight leather is, is nice to emboss on. Wayne, what are you asking if there'll be a video on? The, that fly cork thing. Oh, I think it'll be part of our fishing pattern pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be, we're working on finishing up our, our fly fishing pattern pack. Um, and so that little cork doodad will be part of that pack. Oh, I was going to tell everybody who won our apron, tool apron giveaway. So... Tony finally got all the names pulled from all of the different. Why did it take so Tony so long to do that? Because oh. it takes so slow. We have a lot of other jobs also. Oh. Um, yeah, so Tony finally was able to get all the names pulled from all the people that commented on the uh, giveaway that we did at the end of the year. And uh, John Babineau. John Babineau was our lovely tool apron winner. So it is. Headed out to him. He's got congratulations. A cool he does. Babino. Babino. That just kind of rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, PBO thirteen is the best oh. number we're using. Oh these, yes. These are all the same tools. So the tools that we listed last Wednesday, these are the same tools that yeah. you're using. Um, There's seven I'm stamping sure tools. Tony yeah. will put them I in. I have the whole sheet on my desk ready to work on. It's going to be the after party. I will get there. Yeah. We'll get there. I will get there. Give the man some time. Jeez. We should, we should make the Denny Novice pack set. The, the Denny Novice tool set. I would like that if you did. Denny would love that. And yeah, then he could just be like, here's low, one item number. The low novice set. I like it. Denny, you got a good last name. <laughs> it's simple. <laughs> easy Chucky to D. spell, you know? <laughs> Chucky D novice set. <laughs> we make a hit sound hit. Right, I've got the flower. I'm doing the flower stem now. <laughs> Wayne wants to know if they buy a fly fishing pack, would that include a fishing trip with Denny? Sure. <laughs> Denny loves to fish. Come on down. Sure. Just 1463 South Point Sunday through Sunday through Tuesday, he is available for any fishing trips. A lot of times Wednesday and Friday too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon. <laughs> The low down tooling kit. I like it. Yeah. The apron giveaway. When I first spun for the apron giveaway, do you want to tell them what happened to Liz? Oh, yeah. The first person that Tony, whenever he did his, you know, those online random generator things, it was his mother. <laughs> and he said, I probably shouldn't give my mother the apron. <laughs> so he did it again. <laughs> did it make your mother... Did it hurt her feelings that you wouldn't? Oh, I don't think. Her? Did you she tell her? Now, she just now heard it. Yeah, she's watching. Oh. He says we should inclo include a 4x4 four four piece of leather with the Denny tool pack. Like a 4 inch by 4 inch? Or do you want a 4 foot by 4 foot? Because that's not happening. Uh, we will include it. And we're going to just charge that. Every time one is ordered, we're just going to charge that 4 piece. 4 <laughs> by heat. 4 piece to heat. <laughs> You guys just need to send some trading cards in. Yeah. There's your piece of leather right there. There you go. I don't think they wanted a tool. They just wanted a flat piece for us to send with it. Oh. oh I see. So now my feelings are hurt. <laughs> I, do you have feelings? Sort of. Oh, okay. They're hurt. Yeah. Wherever they're hurt, they're hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Denny, I actually have a question. So, we do sell the basic seven and the basic nine starter kits, or like the basic ten, basic seven. They, they both mm -hmm. come with a swivel knife. 
are those tools that you're using here, there's just a couple more of them, or is your little thing a little bit different? They're quite a bit different. Okay. Uh, the pear shader is probably in there, and, and maybe a camouflage tool, mm -hmm. and maybe a mule's foot, I'm not sure, and a backgrounder. The veiner, the flower center, and the beveler are different. And, okay. And that is that is a big difference. It's a main difference okay. for, for the kind of tooling that I do compared to <laughs> the tooling that uh, those were made, those original kits were made. Well, we could probably put your cute little four pack of flowers because Tony will, by the time we finish this this video series, we'll have all of them drawn. So we could sure. put those in there. We could put a little QR code to the video so they can tool along with you with the patterns. And That'd be great. I think yeah. that'd be lovely. Why does it say it takes a long to get items? Just keep adding stuff. We're just here to meet people's needs. That's all we're here for. Is that your business developments, Liz? Yeah, that's my developing business for the month head, of January. Head, uh, head of, head of um, filling people's needs. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's actually probably more accurate to what my day to day activities tend to be. <laughs> <laughs> hard to explain, isn't it? It is hard to. I know. Everybody's always like, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. Whatever I need to do for that day, that's what I do. You do stuff. I do things. Nothing. See, you kind of run the spearmint station here. <laughs> <laughs> I could be head spearminter. Head spearminter, yeah. <laughs> she was doing on shipping the teddy bears the other day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I uh, I tried to make some breech babies, but my bags weren't big enough. <laughs> um, so what I ended up with was just uh, diving teddy bears, suffocating diving teddy bears. I just needed to get an order in there with them. So I had to stuff this bear somehow in a plastic bag. So I got bears like this. But their arms were like, you know, the size of their head. So it was really like this. And the, then the bag went to like mid chest. So I just had like diving teddy bears, but suffocating them because they were in plastic bags. They're resilient though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll Anyways. bounce right back. So for those of you that got the teddy bears, uh, please don't be too alarmed <laughs> when you receive them. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay, I've got my flowers and my leaves done and I just did this little fold over deal here in this corner so now I'm just going for the rest of it just getting all those chicken necks getting all the chicken um, necks. but not like that but not like that <laughs> I was just looking on our on our discord page that the question and answers on there and we don't have any questions to answer on the discord so oh cool hey Denny what kind of tool, tips and tricks you got up your sleeve what kind of what T tips and tricks yeah, tips and tricks. Yeah, what do you keep oh. up your sleeve there? Uh, the first tip I put on there <laughs> is Denny's tip is to saddle soap everything. Yes, saddle soap. That's the cure all for everything that ails you. Yeah, if your sewing machine skips up, skips saddle stitch, soap it. Just saddle, saddle soap it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Don't do that. If you, you guys do that, we'll soap the thread. Fire you That'll as make customers. the thread slip. There you go. Nice and slick. If you're having, if you got some dry thread, <laughs> but don't, don't wax your thread. No. Don't do that. That's a bad, don't do that in a sewing machine. You don't want wax thread in a sewing machine. That's bad news bears. <laughs> you talk about breech bears. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these people meeting up in Washington. You guys can, like, go congregate on a mountain somewhere. Good for and we've got a new question on the question and answer on Discord. Good for chimes in. What about ceramic versus metal blades with lines? Oh, that is brand you? new. I mean, we did talk about that last week, but we can do it again if you want. Yeah. Yes, use ceramic if you've got ceramic. Just don't drop it. Yeah. 
Use it's, a ruby if you've got a ruby. Just don't drop yeah. it. <laughs> Ceramic. What works best for you? Nope. Use that one. <laughs> Whatever you have, use it. Because it will all work. Just make sure it's polished. Yeah. Just put strong. Keep everybody, everybody always keep this cute little plastic thing that comes on the tip of every swivel knife blade so that you can protect it when you're done with it. You put this on and you take it off and you don't lose this little rubber thingy right here. Protect your blade, and then strop it. <laughs> Protect it and strop it, yep. And then use it. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, <laughs> you can't get better if you don't use it. Yeah, ceramic blades don't work very well if you don't use them. Exactly. Oh, why is that not? Now, metal blades work fine if you don't use them, right? Yeah, of course, you know. No, the whole key, you, you're never going to get better if you don't do it. You can watch us all day long. You know what? So I'm, my current Harry Potter book that I'm reading is, um, the order of the Phoenix and, and Dolores Umbridge comes into the school. Right. Yeah. And, and so she's trying to teach, like they're doing a non-practical defense against the dark arts. You're not going to, you're not going to learn how to do the spells if you can't use them. If you only read about them all day long, but you never practice how to do it, you're never going to do it. You're never going to know what it feels like. You're never going to know the hiccups that you have. You're never going to know your strengths on things because you can learn theory all day. But if you don't do it, you're never going to get anywhere. Yep. You guys, what we're doing here is a lesson in life. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's what, that's, you know what? It's the first video of the year. This is our, this is our take home yeah. for this video is just do it. SLC is really coming to age right here. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, something that I've neglected to, to expound upon all the way through this, this novice class is how you hold your maul or your oh. mallet. Okay, look at that. And I, and I was thinking about that this morning that I need to mention that, and I forgot it again. Well, let's talk about now. it. When you pick up a lot of people, and I would say most people, when they pick up their maul or their, ha or their mallet, they hold it like a hammer, and they want to go like this with it. But if you notice when you do this, you're using your whole arm. Mm -hmm. Same way with the mall. You're using your whole arm. If you will take and hold it parallel to your body like this, you can just use your wrist. You get good rhythm with your wrist. You, you have good leverage with your wrist. Same way with a mall or a mallet. You can use it like this. And most people or a lot of people will hold their mallet. Because they're, they're getting ready to. Here. Yeah, because they're getting ready to drive railroad spikes with it or something. <laughs> yeah. But if you'll choke up on on the handle on a lot of these tools, you know, you will get better action out of them. Anyway, that's what I've got to say about that. Practice practice going like this instead of like this. I could I I need to practice that. Yeah. I need to do that. Yeah. But if you will watch how I'm doing this. Oh. Yeah, your arm barely moves. Yeah. But my wrist is going like my wrist mm -hmm. is doing everything. Yeah. Okay, there's our other lesson in life for the day, you guys. Well, and you know, it's it's there's so many little nuanced things. Like you've been doing this for so long that your body just knows what to do. The same way, like when Chris, you know, um, taught wire wrapping classes, he whenever he first started teaching them, he had to change his mindset because he realized that there's a lot of things that he just naturally does. How he holds pliers, how he held his pendant when he was wrapping things, how the placement of the pliers on the, the wire to like cock it in a way to create, you know, whatever elements that he's trying to create. There's a lot of things that you just, as you learn how to do it, there are things that you do that when people are struggling, you're like, why are you struggling? Like, this is really simple, but you, like, there's literally just ways that you hold your body that make all the difference. Yeah. 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 And so he, you know, like it was like a mindset change of like, oh, I need to, I need to describe this differently. Yeah. Cause a lot of these things you will come up, you will just figure it out on your own, mm -hmm. but some things you will never figure out unless someone tells you and you yeah. say, oh, wow. Or, you, you know, you might figure it out in a year, but you could be that much better by just being able to learn from somebody right. else. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. Are we beveled? Uh, we are beveled. We're beveled. Did you, do you ever hold your tool in your left hand and, and strike with your right hand? Only when I'm sleeping. Yeah. <laughs>
I can't do that. I don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm the I'm the same way. I will. I, will. I would hurt myself pretty bad, and yeah. and the leather. He just hammer his hand instead of the tool. <laughs> okay, next step will be our background, and these steps that I take, everybody doesn't go in the same order that I go in. A lot of toolers will do differently, but I'm showing you how I do it and how I get along well with. Uh, did you mark your background this time? No, but I will. If, yeah, that's another thing. If you will, if you will take the time and mark out your background areas. We don't have another, just a, Oh, it's probably in that box down there somewhere. Uh, this but, is okay. Okay. I'm just going to mark these background areas and they will help me to, uh, I'm too late to do this now. I'll, I'll mark the background areas. That'll show me where I need the background, which I know anyway. But, but if was, you do that before you bevel, it will show you which side of the line to bevel on because you always want to bevel on the background side of your line. That's right. So yeah, in the last video, you definitely did that before. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to mark all these spots. And then that, just like people struggle getting the, the right side of their line beveled, this helps to alleviate those issues yeah if you can if you can just get it in your head that every back that if you have a background area anywhere on that line that's the side of the line that needs to be beveled that's another little background area but like i said now i back i mark my background areas because i was told to <laughs> Deborah, we had one for, like we, um, there is one. So for like the last video that we do, it's the same order every time. Yes. So that for the last several videos that we've done, I believe we either had like a little sheet that was posted, um, but it is the order. So if you go at least back to the last one, there's the sheet with the order of operations that you go through. If you go to the, um, the advanced class that we did a few weeks ago, there's the order of operations for the more set of tools that he used. So we, those are included um, as part of the information packet. Yeah, and the only, the only difference between the advanced and the, the novice order is there's a few more tools in the advanced class. But the order that I use these basic tools in is still the same. No, Denny is using his dominant hand to whack the tool. So the dominant hand, he's a lefty. So the mallet is in his left hand. If I tried to use a mallet in my left hand, I would whack my hand and not the tool. So I use the mallet with my right hand. Well, you guys, you know, whichever hand is comfortable for you to use is the one you need to use. Yeah. If you pick up a, a maul or a mallet and it feels uncomfortable in one hand but more comfortable in the other, that's the way you need to do it. You know, most people that are left-handed will hold the, their maul in their left hand and their the tool in their right hand. But that's not cut and dried. Nita, um, I think that's your name. It's it's kind of small, but I think that that is what I'm seeing. Um, yeah, I mean, you can tool anything, but you're still going to use these basic ideas for each of these things, no matter what it is. Um, Justin tooled a skull or a, it was a, like a, a bobcat. Tattoo panther. Okay, so yeah, he had like a panther design. You're going to, you know, find some line art and then, but you're still going to go through the same basic, basic methods of tooling. You're going to bevel it first, then you're going to figure out where your background is. Um, search what you want. Search. Yeah, search you can take. Line art. Search exactly. Art. Yeah, when I bevel yeah. that, I just found the center point. And that was the highest and just went from there. Yeah. So it's, take these, take what you're learning here. Even if you don't love Sheridan Floral, that's fine. But then apply it to your own art. What, I, what I'm trying to show you guys as, as novice people are what these tools are used for. Yeah. And also, if you're just practicing and just getting into it and you don't know how to like draw your own patterns yet, at the end of the day, it really doesn't. I hate to say this, it doesn't
doesn't matter what you're tooling. If you just don't want to tool anything because it's shared in floral, then you're never going to get better because there's not a lot of modern patterns out there necessarily. Like there's a couple here and there that you can find. You might be able to buy from somebody or whatever, but start here. Do, I mean, this is just a free pattern. So figure out your tooling, figure out how to use your tools on something that's lined out for you. And then draw your own pattern once you're getting the hang of it. And we talk about that in the shirt and floral of going and finding somebody else's work and use that as a tracing pattern. Use elements of theirs of something that you want to make it look like. Yeah. I, we, you know. Why I, doesn't Denny like to, why doesn't Denny do skulls and other little stuff? Because that's not what Denny likes. Yeah. So we have floral and Sheridan styles. That's the patterns we have because that's the person that's drawing our patterns. That's what they like to draw. And also the more, like, honestly, I feel like this specific style is is a little bit more general. Like if we start putting skulls on everything, that's only going to get to this one little customer base anyways. So, I mean, it, you got to draw your own patterns at some point. You got to... a great place to look for patterns. Uh, type in G-O-O-G-L-E and then the little search bar. Search for the, the, the yeah. style that you want. Yeah. And put line art after it. The point is, is if you don't know how to use a swivel knife or a beveler or a pear shader or a veiner or a background tool, you aren't going to be able to do any of that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But if you can or, this or you're going to be guessing at it. Right. You know. Which, but I mean, it's fine. If you can take this pattern and make it look how it's supposed to be in the picture, then you're ready to move on and start making your own stuff. And you've, yeah. you've been it and you're using the tools how they're supposed to be. Or for Pete's sake, replace those flowers with whatever element you want right there. Yeah, like this keep, could be keep a skull. the chicken necks. <laughs> exactly, this could be a skull. So and just those chicken necks could be crossbones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Justin was saying the other day, a lot of things are easily replaced with flames. You just put flames in it, and then <laughs> suddenly you're Harley Davidson. Yeah, you know. You know, and there again, the. There is a difference between actual leather carving and uh, figure carving. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're a little bit different from each other. But there again, there's a lot of elements that, that border on each other. Yeah. You know. Well, even, so Charles makes a good point that coloring books make good line art stuff. But you know what? They also have adult adult coloring books that have more complex designs. Yeah, they do. An adult coloring book that has lots of lines in it. And use yep. it. Yep. You can find a pattern anywhere if you just use your imagination. It doesn't have to be specifically made for leather yeah. working. Yeah. Okay, you guys, I'm going to wet this back up again because I've, I've beveled everything and I've done my background and everything. And the background, the drier it is, the better I get along with it. But for this next step, which is the pear shader, I want a little more moisture in my leather because I'm going to be actually moving some leather with this um, pear Ron shader. So Denny does circles in his class, but he did the squares. Tony is working on the square patterns. It's just, there's also a lot of other things to do. So as he has time, he will work on getting the square patterns done. Hopefully in the next like week or two, as we continue the series and do all four of these, um, he will get there and I then have we'll the, have them have available. The one that we did last time, I have the one sitting, it, it's in my computer and I'll do it to, yeah. I'll do it for the after party. So they'll have to bear with that okay. of me doing it. So we'll get it all done. Uh, and then when we do the, what? Two and three. Mm -hmm. I'll get those from Denny this afternoon. I'll make the copies and they'll be ready to go when the video comes out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next step is our uh, pear shader. Uh, now, last week we went over the use of it, but I'm going to tell you a little bit again. We don't hit this tool straight up and down. We tip it forward or backward. Depending Most, on mostly I tip mine forward. Okay. You know, but uh, it had <laughs> it it's right. shaped it's shaped like a pear. Yeah. You can see it there. So you have a small end and a big fat end. And I'm going to use, I'm doing these flower petals, I'm going to use this small end. And if you can see, I'm going to place it just about like that. I'm not going to be right out at the edge of that flower petal, but I'm going to be back in just a little bit. And you want to be consistent. On all the flower petals, you want to start in about the same area. But if you see what I did there, 
and everything wants to head towards the center of that flower again. Just remember that flow. I actually have an appointment, so I have to go, but you're doing great. You keep you're going. You're leaving me? I know. Okay. It was, it was a, a fupa. Okay. Well, but, thanks well, a lot. Tony thanks. will, yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Enjoy, Tony. enjoy your day. Thanks. Well, I'll be back. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back. But anyway, I'm going to go all the way around these flower petals. Just remember the flow. Everything goes towards that, that center. If, if, you, if you went all the way and followed through with this pear shader, it would go right to the center of this flower. It goes a long ways, but you want to be uh, pretty definite about it. This is, you don't want to baby this too, or you want to make a nice dark burnish, you know, in your leather. If you don't, you aren't the pear shader is not doing its job because it says a pear shader because it it actually creates shading in your. Tony, hey, I'm gonna come. Are you I, here to help? We shift. We shifted around. This is how quickly we can shift around roles. I will step in and be Liz. Hey guys, <laughs> Justin's going to be over at the computer producing all of it. Okay, now I've got my uh, my flowers parachuted. Now I'm gonna go to this little uh, fold over deal, and I'm gonna trade around and use the fat end of this tool because I got a pretty good sized area there. see what I did there. Now I'm gonna, <clears throat> I've already beveled, I wish I had brought a pointer with me, but if you can see I've already beveled this area here when I beveled this line, but I'm gonna accentuate that a little bit and I'm gonna use the pear shader to do that. I have other tools that I could do it with, but this is the only tool I've got here to do it with. So. Yeah, that shows what it looks like on that overhead. But this I did that to make it look like this little part here looked like the underside of that leaf, that chicken neck that was folded over. Okay, now those are all of the main areas that I'm going to pear shade. So now I'm going to go to my chicken necks and just use the fat end or the thin end, whichever one fits in the area that you're doing. Notice I'm not going all the way down these. I'm just going a little ways. Bourbon, everybody likes razzing me. What are they doing? Oh, he was just, he's just got to be patient with Tony because they were saying how long it took me. And I just, I said, Tony has a lot going on. Charles said, we don't know what Tony does 90% of the time. Tony doesn't know what Tony does 90% of the time because he forgets what he just did. Hey, you want to remember to be on camera? Oh, if you think I ought to be. You yeah. think I ought to be? Yeah. Oh, that went the wrong way, huh? I'll just use this little mallet here. Keep it pushed in the camera. Okay. <laughs> All right. Done with the pear shader. <laughs> it is easy. Now, uh, this isn't on my list, but I'm going to do this for you guys. I'm going to use my uh, camouflage tool. And I'm going to go right around this flower center. And I did this last week too, around these flower, those flowers. But what this does, it makes it look like these flower petals are actually going in towards the center of this flower. Yeah. Well, whenever you go reset your flower center, it's going to give you a little space to also set it back in. And it, if you don't match up perfectly, well, yeah, I mean, I'm coming as close as I can, but this is a kind of a cumbersome tool to do this particular thing yep. with, but it's going to work. And I will show you if you, I don't know if you can see, but I kind of got into these flower centers a little bit. That'll change here in a minute. Okay, next I'm going to use this Vayner, this V715. And I'm going to get right up against that flower center, right on the the edge of this flower petal and I'm going to tip this tool I'm not going to hold it straight up and down I'm going to tip it some but I'm going to do that all the way around this flower on every petal 
after I get done with this, I'll hold it up and show and you that's guys. That's going to be one of our more popular tools, so it's it's hard to keep that one stuck. The Vayner one? Yeah. Yeah. So if you can't find it, there are substitutions, right, Vinny? Yeah. Uh, the main thing you want to get is is a very thin type Vayner uh, and one that's fairly straight that doesn't have a lot of arc to it. But if you will look at that, you can see I did this one. Mm -hmm. Compared to the other one, you can see what I've done with that Vayner. So now I'll do the other flower and make them both the same. Just remember to tip this tool and follow. <clears throat> your your vayner isn't isn't going to be the exact same arc as as your pedal is. That's why you want to tip it because if if I held it more straight up and down, I would be going out. You know, uh, I wouldn't be following the. It wouldn't Slow. look like I was following that uh, that vein. How come Herman Oak burnishes differently than the import? Uh, it's just the way they tan it. They use, for one thing, they use oak bark, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what sort of, other vegetable tan leather, leathers use a type of tree bark, but I'm not sure if it's all oak. But the oak is what gives gives this Herman oak the color that it has. Makes it burnish like it does. Plus, I'm not sure what their ratio of tree bark and- What their, uh, what their setup yeah, is. Yeah. The oils that they put in, the fats right. that, they, that they put in. Okay. Now, if you will recall, we set this flower center lightly to begin with, but now I'm going to use a little more authority and reset it. Plus, when I went around it with the uh, camouflage tool, I, I kind of messed it up a little bit. So I'm going to reset it now. <laughs> but if you can see there, now we've got a... Uh, now we've got a pretty nice flower center there. And, if, and the other one isn't. So I'm going to make that different too. Now we've got two good flower centers there. And that flower is done for the most part other than our decorative cuts. So next, I'm going to use this veiner and I'm going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to work on our flower stem here. I'm going to pick a, a point down here a little bit away from our the top of our stem and make a little dot right in the middle of that flower stem. And that's going to be a point that I aim for. I'm going to stick my uh, my vayner up against that flower petal and aim it towards that point but I'm not going to hold the the tool straight up and down again. I'm going to tip it. So that's our that's our first one. Let's look oh Let's see where we at right there but if you notice that little point that I've got down there yeah, I don't have a I aimed right towards that point okay now I'm gonna move it just a bit if I can find it again here I'm gonna move it up that pedal a little bit but I'm gonna aim at that same point and tip it remember to tip it now I'm gonna move it again just a little bit but I'm still gonna aim at that same point by aiming at that point, what you're doing is, is you're actually fanning this tool across that flower stem. Now, I'm going to accentuate this point down here so you can all kind of see what I did. Yeah, let's see. But all, every time I set that vayner, I aimed it towards that point. And that way it just fanned across there. If you just go straight across there, it, it, you don't get any effect from it. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use this same tool and I'm going to go on each side of our flower pet or our uh, leaf stem. When I, can we, hold on. The leather's starting to bend the wrong way. Okay. Now then, if, if you, yeah, okay. This leaf stem right here, <clears throat> I don't want to go perpendicular to that stem. I want to, I want to angle it up towards the top, or that leaf. I want to angle it up towards the top of that leaf. 
and you can go as close together or far apart as you want to with these as long as you're consistent on each side. If you see what I did mm -hmm. there, but see how they're angled up towards the top of that leaf? Now I'm going to switch to the other side and kind of match those. Remember to keep a lot of angle towards the top. See what I've got there on that leaf. But I went right towards the, the stem and then uh, angled it up towards the top of the leaf. I'm going to do the same thing with this other one. So while you hammer that out, flower centers do come in different sizes. Yes, they do. Many different sizes of it. Uh, make sure you get a, a flower center that has a, a beveled shoulder on it. You don't want a flower center that just stops. Yeah. yeah show them that. So what we're talking about, what he's talking about there is... Yeah, if you notice the edge of that is rounded over. Oh, it's kind of rounded right right on that edge right there. Yeah. Kind of domed. Yeah. Okay. We're done with our veiner, I believe. I don't remember anything else that I need it for. Okay. Now let's go to our uh, mule's foot. Yep. And just, if you don't have this particular one, which is a U851, just use the smallest mule foot you've got. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start right at this, on this flower stem, right about that point that I made. For one thing, I wanna cover that point up. Yep. Uh, Sheridan's not really a person, Sheridan's a Wyoming. It's a town in Wyoming. When I do this, I wanna keep them pretty close together and each one I wanna, I wanna tap a little bit lighter so that they just fade out into it. Oblivion. Zero-ness. I'm going to do the same thing with this flower stem. All right. As far as the Sheridan style, what, was it just the people that were doing that style all were kind of around Sheridan? Yeah. The, Sheridan was kind of the saddle maker's mecca of the, of the U.S. for quite a while. Yeah. There, uh, a guy named Don King is the one that actually started doing this style of, of leather work. But there are a lot of really fine uh, leather carvers still around Sheridan. But to also, since he started doing it, they've spread out not all, not only all over the country, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. Japan, I guarantee you, most of what those Japanese carvers do have stemmed from the Don King type of Sheridan leather carver. And you talk about crafters putting out some amazing yeah. artwork. Yeah. But... But, you know, in in reality, it was all the same. I mean, the old traditional Western leather carving still used a flower and a stem. Mm -hmm. What Don King did was start making them in, in circles and, and uh, meandering from one flower to the next and, and making everything flow together to where you've got a, a, just a confluence of, of flowers, but they're, they all, they all, act like they're supposed to be there. Right. They are, it's not like a bunch of flowers you threw down on a table and they're, they're all... Right, I'll just put one here, I'll put one yeah. there, I don't care what the... Right. Okay, now we're going to put our decorative cuts on, which is the final step. And I'm going to start with the flowers. And you can do your decorative cuts however you want. But they should all start on kind of an arc. They should all start heavy and end up light. And they should all go towards the flow of whatever yeah. feature you're on. I have to switch cameras back to that other, or switch lenses back to that other one. So hang on just a second while you keep okay. on going. Just don't do them all before I get. To well, the I'll just wait on you. All right. I need to. Because this is the final step anyway. And Cut there. All right. Now I'm just going to do each flower petal like this from the outside towards the, the center of the flower and 
like I said, if you will notice, none of these cuts are straight. They all start on a, on a little bit of an arc, but they all end up where if I followed through with them, they would end up right in the center of that flower. Have you ever seen the work of Al Shelton? Al Shelton. I don't know. The name sounds familiar. We, who I think was, Jim Linnell talked about him when he was here. I'm not familiar with him, no. Maybe the California style, I don't remember. Could be. But there again, style doesn't matter. They all, we all use the same tool. We all use a swivel knife, a beveler, a pear shader of sorts. It mm -hmm. could be a thumbprint, you know, but that's basically the, does the same type of thing. Uh, bevelers, uh, pear shaders, veiners. Do you polish your, your other tools? Sure. Denny, besides just sure. your strop? Sure. Uh, you know, depending on the tool, I mean, a, a, a checkered beveler, I don't want to polish the face of it off. Unless you want the face to be right. smooth and all you got is a checkered beveler. But if, you, but if you keep your tools shined up, they will work a lot better than something that's corroded and rough. Yeah. Al Shelton was a crafter out west from the 20s. He was born in the 20s, but he did a lot of... Um, work for Hollywood. Ah, uh, a lot of the Hollywood work. Okay, I'm done with the flowers. You can see that, what I've done with the flowers. I went from the outside in, and then I made a couple of cuts from the inside out. Now, I'm going to go to the chicken necks. Well, where are you yeah, you got me. There's not really any rhyme or reason. If you look at Denny's stuff and he does the same design, there might be the same. He might do the same cross hatch pattern on it. But I'm looking at your other one. I don't think you fully did it like that. But it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, the way to get better at the way to get better at um, decorative cuts, Denny. Do them. Do them. Do a bunch of them. Look at a lot of other people, a lot of other leather carving, and see what you like. Try to emulate the the ones that you like. And watch other people do it. If you watch Jim Linnell, and Jim, if you're listening, which I doubt that you are, but if you are <laughs> listening, I mean nothing about this. But Jim's hand shakes until he touches the leather. Yeah. And then it's perfectly, I mean, it's perfect rhythm when he makes his decorative cuts. Yeah. Okay. I put a decorative cut on every chicken neck, but now let's go to where a bunch of these lines come together. And I'm just gonna kinda try and detract from all of that. And that's all I'm gonna do. I say it's all I'm gonna do, but I'm doing this. Let's go on these leaf stems and make a little bit. <laughs> The earthquake! <laughs> All right, we're going to call that done. Let's let's look at the two together here. Let me set lamb. And so what I was meaning, where's your, where you got a point and stick at? So what were you talking about like on the decorative cuts? See, this one's like a, I don't know, a, what would you call that? Just, just a cross hatch. But then this one, this one we just did straight lines on. Uh, where else we got? The cuts here come to a point, and these are separated. These are these are straight lines, and those come to a point. And we got these cuts that are here, and we did a mule's foot there. You can change your artwork every time, but if you don't know if you don't know how to use the tools, then you're not going to be successful. Yeah. And just the main thing to remember on decorative cuts is they are not straight, and they always follow the flow of the pattern, and, and they always start deep and end up in a hairline. It, yeah, start deep and shallow. Let's see. 
Uh, Dennis says, when I peel the tape off the back of my coasters, it's all fuzzy. Saddle soaping. <laughs> That's right. Or gum tragging. Yeah, gum trag is, is good. You can saddle soap it and just if, rub it back down. Token all will slick it back down. Sometimes sometimes the tape will leave it sticky. Uh, yeah. Put some talcum powder on the back of it. That'll, that'll yeah. get the stickiness off of it. Well, even if you gum trag, if it's sticky. If you, uh, if you, a lot of times that sticky will show through. Yeah. And about the only thing that I've found to get rid of it is a little talcum powder. Yeah. Let's see. Seeing if we missed anything else on there. Vanessa was saying when she goes to Home Depot to instill confidence in her, she parks in the pro section. There you go. <laughs> Maybe that's what we need to do I out on our in. parking lot. I don't ever go in the pro door, but I always go out of the pro door. Oh, that! <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> Maybe that's what we should do out here. We should put some pro parking spots yeah, out, of the, out of the area. Let's see, was there anything else? Dean was saying, how do you keep your tools so shiny? Uh, he doesn't throw them in the mud. Well, I use them a lot, for one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you, if you're someplace where there's a lot of moisture, you know, and you don't use your tools very much, they're going to get kind of corroded feeling, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, polish them. Use them. Yeah, we, got, we have uh, craft aids. We have craft aids here, right? Is that what we call it? No, carve rights. Carve rights. Carve rights, which are the same thing as the craft aids, but there's those to help you put stuff down. There was one over there that had feathers on it. Is that one done? Uh, no. Perfect. I've never done that one. Well, we should probably. Is that ours? Yeah, that's one of Jim Linnell's, I believe. Ah, that you were just. Someone brought it over oh. to me to, to see how. So it those are on the front page of our website. Uh, Jim has some patterns and things on there. Let's see. Charles says he puts cork on the back of his coasters. You can line it with pig suede. Yeah. So what do you want to do? We'll do another one. You guys don't know what two or three is, but we'll do. Well. Friday we're doing zippers. Yeah. Next Wednesday we can pick a. Let's do number two next Wednesday since I've skipped forward. How is. Oh, they're not a lot different. Two no, and three are a lot they different. They are all different. Two, okay, let me tell you why I made the progression of these. Number one is just a flower with, with straight petals. There's no no mm -hmm. fluttery stuff. Is that the same one that was off the circle coaster? Yeah, well, basically, basically yes, yeah. same flower. Yeah, but it doesn't have any leaves. Number two here, which we will do next Wednesday, this flower has four petals, but it also has some inside curves on it. If you see those, yep. which are a bit different. The stem is a bit different. Uh, this leaf, it has a leaf, which we did We did a leaf today, but this one is different yet. Mm -hmm. So I will show you how to do this leaf. And the third one, same flower as the second, which has inside curves, but this leaf also has inside mm -hmm. curves. And it has two, two uh, foldovers on it. Yeah, foldover, turn back. And, and then, then the one we did today has two flowers, two leaves, and some and, fold, and a fold over. Well, you just yeah. kept on adding to it. Yeah, uh, each one. I tried to do this so each one had a, a different feature in it that you hadn't done before. Yeah. So uh, Willie Bob was saying, "I'm struggling getting comfortable a comfortable grip on my swivel knife. It's adjustable." Uh, okay. And everyone, turn your ears has on. a different way to do this. To me. And I've been told this before by a guy named Gordon Andrus, who, who is a world famous and very world class tooler. If you go from, from this part of, of this knuckle, the end of your uh, swivel knife, the, the blade should be about at the heel of your hand. That causes you to have to stretch. Uh, yeah, you have to stretch this finger and that's where your power is. These fingers down here are your steering wheel. So if you're having trouble, if you're kind of scrunched up with a short knife and hold, you'll have to hold your knife down here more so than out here. 
that's where I would have trouble. For one thing, I would be covering up my work when I'm when I'm tooling like mm. that. Yeah, if you are bear crawl, yeah, call, uh, bear clawing it. But if, but if you have to reach for the for the yoke on your swivel knife a little bit, I think you will you will end up having a little more control. It might be a little uncomfortable at first, but if you will try that. I think you will be surprised. And if it feels like it's too long, adjust it down just a yeah. little bit. To, yeah, but it, to, it's adjustable. But adjust to, it. but make it make it long. Yeah. Make it longer than you think it should be, and and have to stretch for it. Yeah. I I think you will you will be pleasantly surprised if you use it like that a little bit. Robert has a question. His Swivel knife blades are getting a little round edge. Then you will have to put them on a stone. You'll have to use a, I forget what we call that little tool, but you'll have to yeah, take Yeah, we looked at it, we looked at it one time. What was that little tool called? It's under, it's under shop now, hand it's tools and like miscellaneous Easy tools. Sharp or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Easy, easy Sharp. I don't sharp. remember what it is. But oh. if you will look at the side of your, your blade, it's on a bevel. Yeah, we hit four and, right and you or take, three. You take the blade out of your swivel knife and put it in this little tool. Okay, go ahead. But you but you want to adjust the tool where where you've got about the same bevel as you have on this. Use a stone and drag it across your stone. Right. Drag it the same number of strokes. Say drag it five five strokes on one side and turn it over and drag it five stokes strokes on the other side. And do that until you get rid of those rounded points, or rounded ends, rounded edges, because the edge is the only part that's actually going to be doing the work for you. And what we're doing whenever we're getting a rounded edge, why why do we got a rounded edge? Is because we were going like this, we were going across, and then we were lifting yeah. lifting up and turning. We just want yeah. you want to pull straight and then stop, or pull or pull straight up when you get done. So, and then up. And then flip. Now, if if you guys will bear with me, next week I will bring one of those little things in here, and I will show you how to how to sharpen okay. your swivel knife and actually put an edge on it. Yeah, but just make sure you keep whenever you're stropping it that you're not rolling it up on the yeah, end of it. Yeah, don't wipe it like that. Yeah, and and go slow. It, it's not if you go faster and you think you're creating more friction by doing it, you're not doing. Yeah. And you're not. Denny does it fast because Denny's done it for a year or two. If I did it, I would be yeah keen edge sharpener. If I would be keen edge, yes. If I was doing it, like my pace would be this way, and then I'd pick it up and start again. And I'm and I'm going to be going slow, whereas Denny's going, and he's flipped it over, and I was like, and I'm still going on one side of it. Yeah, I just go like this, but if you notice, I'm I've got right. You rotated it. Yeah, I rotate it every time. That way I make sure that I go the same number of strokes on each side. Yeah. But if you're just going to do one side, like when you're using that to, you're on the stone, mm -hmm. you don't, you won't want to turn it every time because you've got to switch, switch it in the tool. In the tool, yeah. But you just go five strokes this way. And then when you get done stropping it, you want to wipe it off. Yeah, because now you've got metal. Got this little dust and you got metal flakes that are on there. Blue marks on your. Yep. Deal. All right, Wednesday we will continue on with uh, number two, and I will get this one done this afternoon so that you guys can have what you need um, for it. I will probably just continue adding it to the novice one, so all four will end up on the one. Uh, so it'll just be the same download link. You'll just have the extra patterns as we go on there. Why? Because Denny prints it off and gives it to his class, and they can have it all when they come into his class. That's right. So put them all together because that makes more sense. If you want to join us a little bit more, we'll be Twitch After Party on my computer hanging out. Thanks a lot, you See guys. See you guys.